Is Ye overrated? Most likely to win a 1v1 with Ye. I think everyone on our team. Has Ye fallen off? Um, I mean, Ye was there too. So... Wait, Ye's not there anymore? Or is there something else going on? What it do? What it do, YouTube? It's your boy Q. Is Ye overrated? And yes, I know exactly how that sounds. Just over a half a year ago, questions started to rise about whether or not Ye would be just as successful once Chamber was nerfed into oblivion. To think that just one agent change could affect a player so much sounds crazy. I know. I'm not crazy! But over the course of 2022, we saw Ye pick Chamber in roughly 85% of his matches. And sure, Ye was plenty good on a duelist before the Chamber meta. He hasn't quite been the same as we will see when we break into the numbers here in just a minute. He also wasn't as good prior to the Chamber meta either. I mean, men lie, women lie, numbers don't. Numbers don't suffer from recency bias. You know what I mean? And I actually posed the question over on Twitter this weekend. After DSG lost a fourth straight matchup to start split number two in NA Challengers. And while I typed it out kind of half jokingly, we do need to talk talk about it just a little bit because I did voice concerns about Ye working out with DSG when the announcement came across. Hey Ye? Yeah, what's up? You want to join DSG? Yeah, sure, why not? This is gonna suck. And if it's your first time through over here on the channel, what up? We talk about almost daily esports news, updates, power rankings, interviews, you name it. So make sure you're smacking that subscribe button and turning those notifications on so we can catch y'all right back here for more BCT videos. And while Disguise Toast may have tried to sell us on the fact that Ye signing with DSG wasn't exactly about winning everything, I would imagine that they would have figured that at this point in the season, they would have won something, right? With this gift, you will win fourth place. 0-4? 0-4? Imagine if LeBron went to the G League, man, and even if it was to the worst of teams in the G League, he'd still be able to get his. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that LeBron would be going out there 1v5 versus everyone and winning every game, but no wins? He'd at least have some outlandish stat in a loss as well, and as I'm about to show you here shortly, Ye's individual statistics aren't even as good as they were at lock-in, where he most definitely was playing against better competition. Is there a chance that the 12 months of an 85% chamber pick rate caused Ye to fall off? I mean, agent designer Kevin Meyer back in December, mentioned in a blog post that Chamber's mechanics were shaping play space in an unhealthy way, infringing on other agents' identities and breaking Valorant's core tactical cycle. Basically, everyone was out here playing checkers and Chamber was playing chess. And I'm not trying to say that Ye wasn't good as a duelist prior to Chamber, right? He obviously was. But if you look at the results of Ye on Chamber and Ye off Chamber, it's a pretty decent difference. He always had that pop-off potential, sure. But when we go back to 2021 before Chamber, the last six months of 2021 in particular, between Challengers Stage 3, Masters Berlin, and DCT Champions. Ye averaged a 1.27 KD. Once Chamber entered the meta though, stock on the rise. Slowly at first through Challengers to a 1.32, but once we got the Champions, El Diablo in true form, 1.5 KD. 1.5. Then the Chamber nerf came in, and during lock-in to start off the season for BCT this year, 1.24 KD. The lowest that it had been in two years. Well, until he was released from Cloud9, and it was known at that point that he would either have to wait until the end of the season to join another team team in the tier 1 scene or would have to go down to the tier 2 scene in order to compete. And while I initially thought that maybe we would see Ye getting wet with the Moist Mobiles entering the Challenger circuit, he actually wouldn't enter Challengers until Split 2 and he would end up signing with DSG. I actually covered it over here on the channel when it all went down. I just don't see it happening. Yeah, Ye is good, great even, but I don't know if that soul change lifts them over all of the other teams at the tippy tippy top. I mean, it had to have been an investment and I told y'all that it wasn't going to work out. Okay. Seriously, how many times do I have to be right on the money before you guys just trust me? Jesus Christ, this kid's gotta get his ego in check. It's his tone, right? Even if this guy's toast was trying to sell us on the fact that making VCT wasn't the main goal, but I mean, come on, we would have expected at least something, right? I mean, Ye's KD in Challenger Circuit, 1.08. And while I know that Valorant's a team game and everything, right, and I joked earlier about going 0-4, it is a team game, but Ye's personal stats are the lowest they've been in some time in Valorant. Definitely interested to know your thoughts, YouTube, down in those comments below. Remember those comments as well as those likes that y'all are about to light up down that bottom right-hand corner. Those are the two things that 
help your boy out the most with that tough YouTube algorithm. But I want to know y'all's thoughts on the fall of Ye or the apparent fall of Ye. If Ye finds himself back in the league surrounded by some of the best players in the world, do we see Ye refine his form? Or was Ye's dominance in 2022 thanks to mostly being a one-trick pony? Because it definitely feels like the player that was once known as El Diablo just doesn't seem to have that fire in him. But maybe that's just me. Y'all already know that later this week we're going to be doing our three regional wraparound videos. See how Pacific wrapped up. Get prepared for the end of the season for EMEA and Americas. I'll have that playlist for those weekly wraparound videos linked at the end of the video here in just a minute in case you missed last week's episode. And if you want to make sure you're back for this coming week's episode, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn those notifications on. But until we catch y'all right back here on the channel or wherever we cross paths next, man, don't forget with everything crazy going on in the world today, be true, be you, be sincere, game hard and love hard, all right, y'all? It's your boy Q, signing off.